I got away. But I got the hundred thousand dollars in that briefcase. You're not hurt? No, not much. I jumped before the car hit the water. The others? They're both gone. Hurry and get to the car. We still may have time to capture the man I left gassed at Foley's. You understand, Cato, that this hundred thousand dollars is the property of the stockholders of the old Colton Company that failed. Yes, Mr. Britt. Axford was one of those stockholders. He told me the new company that took over the plant were crooks. That's right. Now, the stockholders mustn't know that the money comes from me. I'll take good care of that. No, no, not that way. You might run into Axford. Take the back door and mail them at the post office. You sure threw the adjectives in your description of the heiress, Laura. There's plenty of blarney in them lines. Maybe he's figuring on marrying the million. I understand she doesn't like reporters. Oh, she don't, don't she? Well, who is she to be controlling a big company the government's liable to be dependent on in case of war? You don't mean she's really going to control it. She could if she wanted to. She owns three-fourths of the voting stock. She could make herself chairman of the board and run the whole show if she likes. You're right. And what a small chance for a villain. Good morning, boss. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What do you mean, a chance for a villain? Well, in the present world situation, aluminum is one of the most important products in the manufacture of war materials. Of course, but I still don't see... It's this way. Aluminum Products Incorporated controls the aluminum market. Francis Grayson controls aluminum products. Now, if some shrewd, unscrupulous person should get control of Francis Grayson... Our first step is to find an actress whose statue and features are sufficiently like those of Francis Grayson pass muster after a clever makeup. Say, Chief, I know where I can dig up a Jane that's a dead ringer for this Grayson gal, and she's a clever actress. Who is she? Her name's Stella Moya. Never heard of her. She's famous for her impersonations. And with a little makeup, she could deceive Miss Grayson's own mother. Miss Grayson has no mother, nor any other relatives, fortunately for us. Can this Stella Moya be trusted? Stella can be absolutely loyal. She's paid enough. Bring her up tomorrow by the private elevator, blindfolded. Well, anything more? Yeah, this Britt Reed seems to have a fifth sense in probing into things that we're interested in. This editorial in the Sentinel on the death of Grayson says in part, the Sentinel feels sure stockholders will hesitate to entrust leadership of the highly important aluminum products company to the inexperienced 21-year-old Miss Frances Grayson, who inherited that exalted position from her uncle, Homer Grayson. And well, you had your order to take care of Reed. Why don't you execute it? Well, he's pretty well guarded. But waiting for a chance to do a job that wouldn't implicate us. It's imperative that you act at once. I guess your hunch about aluminum products was all wrong, boss. As far as I can find out, everything's under control. All right, Lowry. Hey, by the way, when does Miss Grayson arrive? She sails from London in about 10 days. Why, does it make any difference? It might. You remember that memo book we got from Harper? There was a mention in it of Homer Grayson. That's her father. That's interesting. We know that Harper was definitely connected with the crime syndicate. Here it is. Apparently, it's an order from somebody. It reads, in the event of Homer Grayson's death, consult me before publishing anything about it. Of all the crooks. Boss, who do you think sent Harper that order? I'd give a lot to know. Probably the head of the crime syndicate. They're after the Grayson millions. You want to warn the Grayson company. I intend doing that at once. I'm going to call on Kenneth North. He's vice president in charge of production out there. He's an old friend of mine. Oh, tell Axford to bring his car around to the front of the building. Yes. Hello, Ken. Oh, glad to see you, Britt. Glad to see you. Oh, this is Michael Axford, one of my reporters. How do you do, sir? Thank you, Chef. Uh, that was a splendid editorial that you wrote about the death of Mr. Grayson. We all appreciate it. What can I do for you? What's going to be the new setup around here when Miss Grayson returns? Miss Grayson simply gives proxies to the board of directors. You hope she will. But by golly, you can't depend on women. I knew one once. Michael. <laughs> now tell me, Brett, what's on your mind? Well, as you know. All right, Stella, you can take off the bandage. Boy, that's your blindfold, you all right? I ain't seen a thing since I got into that car. That was the intention, Miss Moyer. And you'll be taken away from here in the same manner. There is a general resemblance to Miss Grayson. 
But, uh... Oh, wait till she gets through with her makeup, Chief. All right, Stella, there's a mirror over there. Here's a picture of Miss Grayson. Get busy. Huh. This'll be easy. So, Ken, that's the whole story. I appreciate your interest, Britt, but I'm sure that the station will not take any active part in the operation of the company. I hope not. Well, if I need help, I'll certainly call in the Sentinel. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Axford. Goodbye, sir. So long, Ken. Bye. Perfect, eh, Krogan? Very good, so far as appearances go, but there's much more to it than that. Miss Grayson, will you please tell this gentleman what you propose to do about Aluminum Products Incorporated? Well, I shall do nothing about it, really. What does one do about such things? I shall sign some of those, uh... Is it proxies, you call them? One of our cultured gentlemen will accompany you to Liverpool. You understand what you're to do. Leave it to me, big boy. I get in with the Grayson dame on the boat, study her voice and so on, and show her how much we look like. Then I sell her on the idea of fooling the reporters by swapping places with me when the boat docks. She's right, Krogan. The Grayson Dane dislikes publicity, dislikes reporters. She'll be glad for a chance to trick them. Beside that, she's always ready for an adventure that promises a thrill. I got a complete record of Miss Grayson's life and activities. Still, I'll be letter perfect in the part by the time she returns. Very good. And if you succeed, you'll be independently wealthy for life. But if you fail or try to double-cross us... The stage will lose a very charming young actress. Don't worry. I'm not going to let you down. I won't double-cross you. Telegram for Miss Grayson. Telegram for Miss Grayson. Miss Grayson. Telegram for Miss Grayson. <laughs> I'll take care of Grayson. You find out who's on that stretcher. Okay, I'll meet you at the taxi stand. All right. Just a minute, Miss Grayson. I'd like a word about Aluminum Products Company. Aluminum Products? Really? Is that anyone's business except my own? Let me pass, please. Thanks for stopping her, Reed. I got a swell shot. Who is the puddle, Doc? Uh, Miss Moria. Just see, sickness. All right, smart guy. We'll take care of her. Snip. It's just her high and mighty way of telling the world who she is. Uh, uh. Mr. Reed's office. Just a minute, please. Mr. North of Aluminum Products on the phone. Right. Hello, Ken. <laughs> Say, you'll have to speak to that new boss of yours. She treated me like a cub reporter on his first assignment. Yeah, she's treated me worse than that. Really? What do you mean? Oh, well, she's going to take control of the company out of the hands of the board. Signing a proxies over to an attorney named uh, Artisan. Did you ever hear of him? I've never met him. I know there is such a man. It's uh, G.K. Artisan, isn't it? That's the man. I hope maybe you had a line on him. I don't have now, but I will have by morning. Uh, thanks, Reed. The control of aluminum products must remain in the hands of the board. I heartily agree with you. Goodbye. Casey. Yes, Mr. Reed. Send uh, Lowry and Axford in, please. I want to line on an attorney by the name of George K. Otterson. Do you know him? He's a big shot corporation lawyer. Plenty of money, country estate. What's he done? That's what I want to know. Find out to who his connections are, if he's ever been mixed up in a shady deal. In other words, I want the whole dope quick. Did you find out anything about Otterson? Only that the guy is too perfect. He don't smoke, he don't drink, he don't go to barbecue shows. He belongs to the church and he takes up the collection. That's the trouble. His halo fits in too tight. <laughs> Even his legal practice is only up and up. There's no clue to any connection between him and that Grayson girl. Well, keep after him. Yes, sir. What will you do now, Mr. Britt? I've got to see Francis Grayson. 
But if she won't talk to you... She won't talk to Britt Reed, but she'll talk to the Green Hornet. You mean... Yes, Cato. The Green Hornet goes into action again. It's good. It's almost perfect. Only you must write more quickly, with more confidence. Why must I go to that Don Dole meeting? Why can't Artisan go and take the papers with them already signed? He's a corporation lawyer. He can handle it. Well, they might question the signature, and if they see you sign the documents, there'll be no question. Now try it again, a little faster. Cut the motor. Be ready for a quick getaway. We're taking Miss Grayson with us. Why would you do that? To keep her from attending an important board meeting of aluminum products tomorrow. I understand. That's good enough. Honerson will be here shortly to give you final instructions about the director's meeting. Who well, that is? Otterson isn't due. It's more of those poor reporters, I guess. But let's get instructions to throw them out. Show me, Miss Grayson. What is this? A hold up? I have no time to argue. Oh! oh. Someone there. Well, let's find out who it is. Oh, who are you? What do you want? Green Hornet. Thanks for the introduction. Now stand over there. I want to talk to Miss Grayson. Miss Grayson, you talk fast. I want to know why you're placing your uncle's millions in Anderson's hands. I don't see that that's any of your business. Whether there are millions at stake, it's always the business of the Green Hornet. Miss Grayson, you're going with me. Oh, kidnapping, eh? Grab the phone. Call Anderson. Call him, please. Call him. You killed him. Not so fast, Miss Grayson. Did you write that? No, I... Yes, yes, of course. It's my signature. So you had to practice your own signature, eh? Why did you do it? Well, because I... Don't lie to me. He made me do it. He made you practice the signature of Francis Grayson. And who are you? I'm Stella Moya. Stella Moya, the actress. Well, spill the rest of it. So Miss Grayson fell for the trick and agreed to come ashore on a stretcher. There was an ambulance there waiting on the dock. Where is Miss Grayson now? She's out at Artisan's country home, ten miles out on Morningdale Road. And you still don't know the name of the man who employed you? No, no, I tell you. I was brought to them blindfolded and taken out the same way. I'd tell you if I knew. But they said they'd kill me if I did. And they will. They will. Now, take it easy. Take it easy, Miss Maria. Sit down. Don't keep you out of mischief for a while. Are you all right, sir? Yes. Well, oh, you have to tie up these, these men. This one here and the one out in the hall. We'll take that one first. After you've roped them, call the police. Tell them to pick up these people on a charge of conspiracy to defraud the Grayson estate. Arrest Miss Grayson? No, oh, that's not Miss Grayson. That's an actress impersonating her. Miss Grayson is a prisoner at the Otterson Country Home. Mr. Artisan. Paul. Stella. What's the meaning of this? The Green Hornet. The Hornet? What's he doing in this job? I tried to kill him, but he gassed me. I don't know what happened then. I thought he'd kill Tower and was going to kill me. He found out who I was and forced me to tell him where Francis Grayson is. We've got to get to my place quick. The Hornet means to kidnap Miss Grayson and hold her for ransom. If Francis Grayson gets out of our hands now, we're all due for a spell in the pen. We've got to get the Hornet. You get out of town and stay hidden. Communicate with Tor as soon as it's safe.
Grayson, you're coming with me. With you? Who are you? What are you? Never mind who I am. I've come to take you away from these crooks. How many people are there in the house? I don't know. Two men brought me here in an ambulance. Some guy in there with the doll. Hey, you're crazy. You're off the beam. I'm telling you, I heard him talking. You sure? Yeah. for the last time. 